people are moving out of California. Everyone's kind of sad right now. Real estate prices are dropping. And these expensive homes like this one, yeah, it's going to be on the market for the next few years. I mean, it's been almost 600 days and this home has not been sold. It's a pretty incredible looking penthouse of almost 10 grand a month HOA. But it seems like nobody's really biting and buying this. Who wants to buy this, right? Because San Francisco is one of the places where everyone is leaving. Oakland is absolute crazy. I mean, the only decently sane place, I guess, is the area around Stanford. But even that is deteriorating. And San Jose isn't really doing so well. It just seems like California and the rest of the Bay Area are just bad, bad, bad. If you look at Los Angeles. A lot of homeless people, politics aren't great, and people are leaving in droves. 90,000 people left this year in Los Angeles alone, and that worries a lot of real estate agents. And if you look at what's going on here, Southern California has lost almost 5,000 real estate jobs, guys. You have Zillow cutting jobs. You got Redfin cutting jobs. California is a state where there's the most amounts of people, tens of millions of people and hundreds of thousands of luxury homes everywhere. But now it seems like not everyone who has money have to buy a house in LA, have to buy one in the Bay Area. Right now, if you just look at the Chinese buyers, for example, a lot of Chinese buyers are kind of turned off by LA real estate. They don't want to buy any LA real estate. I mean, some of them are still doing it but compared to what it was like pre-pandemic it is a huge margin a lot of chinese buyers instead of buying real estate in california they're opting to buy it in places like canada australia singapore new zealand and even thailand recently and if you also look at internationally california has been getting less international buys than before so not a big surprise to see so many real estate jobs being cut and like i said before nowadays when you tell people where do you want to go a lot of individuals and young people who graduate, they don't always say California. It used to be like LA and the Bay Area being super hot. Now the tech scene is moving online and a lot of people are really moving to places like Miami, which a lot of people like Ken Griffin, finance bros, are trying to make it the next Wall Street 2.0. And tech companies are also moving there as well. And not to mention, San Francisco office vacancies is reaching to the point of no return. Guys, this is kind of like the Detroit situation. Detroit used to be a massive automotive industry with cars being coming out from like the factory line, people making a bunch of money, real estate was hot. But guess what happened when the automotive industry left? It became a ghost town. Downtown was kind of crap and pretty much crime was everywhere. And Detroit, even to this day, isn't exactly the finest place to live in the US. Now, the San Francisco office vacancy is pretty scary. Now, San Francisco is a massive tech center, and guess what's happening? They made a bunch of new skyscrapers, new office buildings during the pandemic, taking advantage of that 0% interest rate. But now, they don't really see people moving back. Why should we move back? And companies are like, why should I rent a 200,000 square feet office when I could do the same amount of business even more with 20 thousand square feet of office space. You have massive downsides, shadow vacancies everywhere, which is tenants occupying a space but not using the full space. And they're gonna be downgrading massively or they're straight up leave after the lease ends. And vacancy rates are hitting about 40%. It's kind of like what I'm seeing. And if you're going for a more conservative estimate, probably 30 to 35% is right. And that's pretty bad for office vacancies in San Francisco. Check out other places like Singapore, where office vacancies are pretty low in the low single digits. And over there in Singapore, the only reason why you'll ever have an office vacant is because you're doing a very, very high price tag on it. And everyone gets turned off by it. So San Francisco is no longer the place to be investing in office real estate. In fact, a lot of these tech workers are probably never coming back. And a lot of these guys are becoming digital nomads, moving to the Bahamas, Costa Rica, Thailand, getting a $500 penthouse, and maybe even like, a few cars and they're paying like pennies on a dollar for that. Whereas San Francisco, it's like $3,500 for a kitchen and you don't even get a stove. And that's what's happening. People don't want to move back. And the office vacancies are reaching an all time high, which essentially caused a 350 California Street, a massive skyscraper office in the financial district of San Francisco, which is actually not that bad of a place. And you got SKS buys 350 California Street in San Francisco for 60 to $68 million. 
price per square feet at $200 or $225, that is pretty bad, okay? And remember, it's a building that's 75% empty with a majority of tenants just straight up leaving. Dude, you're not making any money. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you have 75% vacancy rate on a skyscraper like this, you probably can't even pay like the property tax, the management fees, and probably several other city fees and heavy taxes you got to do. And guess what? This building was sold for $300 million back in 2019. You heard that right. $300 million back four years ago. Now it's being sold for almost 80% off. Nobody wants these skyscrapers. In fact, it was a pretty insane blessing to even sell this thing because the management fees and also the property tax, the upkeep for these buildings are insane. And given how high taxes are in California, that is a crazy deal. And obviously, you know, $60, $68 million is a fantastic deal for a skyscraper like this. I'm not, I'm still not really sure how they're going to turn it off, you know, how to turn a profit on a skyscraper like this when not only is this building having a 75% vacancy rate, but other buildings around the city are having the same thing. A lot of tech workers are gone. They're leaving. They no longer want to come back. And rich millennials are on the move with wealthy young professionals earning over $100,000 a year are leaving California and leaving New York. And I tell you where they're going. They're going to the Midwest. They're going to like those small suburban neighborhoods with under 300,000 people where you could actually buy a house for half a million dollars. They're moving to places like Florida, Orlando, Tampa, Fort Lauderdale, Miami are all very popular places. A lot of professionals are moving overseas to cheaper touristy beach cities and countries, and they can live like a king because the American dollar is worth so much and several other cities. So yeah, if you ask me, no wonder people are really moving out of California. In the past two years, half a million people have left during the pandemic. They kind of see that rents aren't really going down in a lot of places. Not to mention, like I said before, why would you spend like $1.4 million on like a little box? And this is like the most normal looking house I've seen in the Bay Area. $3.7 million, 2,500 square feet, but it's $3.7 million. Now, I could guarantee you if you go to the Midwest, you'll find the same exact looking house for $360,000. So people are just kind of sick and tired of all these situations happening. It's not the best time to invest in California real estate. And California prices will continue to go down. If you're one of the guys who want to buy a California condo or a property, you're kind of in luck. Wait a couple more years. Wait till the interest rates absolutely destroy the market. Then go in with your stacks of dollar bills and $100 bills and buy all these homes. So thanks for watching, guys. Comment below. And before you guys leave, definitely check out the private Discord server. Patreon link below for some awesome trades. It's $10 a month, guys. You're not getting a deal better than this. And let's see what happens in California real estate in the years to come.